Boom, so we got it on the hard drive. Boom, boom. <clears throat> All right, can Marcus and uh, Shamayam, can you guys hear us? If you can type in that, the live comment box, I don't know why it, Sam, your comment didn't, didn't uh, enter into the, it didn't enter into the live, the live chat box in the watch party. It went outside. I got, I got it outside, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Let's see if it went in. Wow. Okay, maybe it's just me. All right. Okay. You know what? I'm not even going to worry about the, the comments going into the lives. Probably Facebook mess with something anyway. I think they feel a certain way about us, all of us getting on to the live. All right. <clears throat> all right. Okay. So we're live. Um, it's your boy Pacro, uh, a.k.a. Perez Javis, in the Rumble Room. Uh, I am here with my esteemed guest, Matt, Matt So So Real Sali. Okay, and today we are here to uh, discuss um, uh, a topic that has been simmering and brewing, okay, in the Rumble Room. And I think if I um, might be correct, it's sort of spilling outside onto the, into the YouTube community, uh, the, um, you know, the, the, two parties involved christian apologists versus israelite of course that's an ongoing dialogue it's been an ongoing dialogue for years and so <clears throat> um uh it seems to be sort of the um bubbling uh topic that is sort of uh, gaining headway in the conversation the ongoing conversation i think it's a great one for israelites uh it's sort of another frontier uh, to sort of cross into and uh, increase our understanding uh, of how the um, um, the uh, law and prophets uh, sort of inspire the New Testament writings. Uh, now, of course, Matt Salili he represents the Christian perspective, and so he will uh, fundamentally disagree with my position okay so the 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 dispute sort of arose um between for all those who aren't up on the uh <clears throat> up on the conversation the dispute uh first sort of arose on a video uh on a live discussion that i had with uh laron g con campbell okay so of course many of you know who g con is he's a pretty notable character in the youtube circuit as far as the Hebrew Israelite dialogue. Okay, and uh, so I had a live with him the day after I had after I uh, went live with Brother Jay, and so uh, we talked about many things. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I was left uh, an impression with was our discussion regarding James. Okay. Um, my, my position is that James in his epistle is exhorting his audience, first century believers, uh, all the way up until readers of, of his epistle today, he's exhorting them to, uh, follow the Sinai covenant law, specifically in James two. Um, <clears throat> what I propose is that, um, we sort of go into the text and then, um, Matt, like, uh, what I, what I, what I propose is that since my argument is sort of what sort of sparked the conversation, sparked your counter argument, your response, perhaps I'll sort of give a, a brief overview of, um, of what I, um, communicated to GCon. And then I know that you had a, uh, a, res a response, a video response to, um that dialogue that me and Gcon had my argument okay and so after i do my brief uh setup then i'll give you the floor to sort of respond and or, or if you want to if you want to question me um you can do so or if you want to go straight into your counter argument um then um we can we can allow you the floor to do that um and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll question you, I'll cross, uh, cross examine you 
and it, with your argument, <clears throat> and then we can negotiate the dialogue from there. But but I think what's important first is that everybody sort of understand the 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 backdrop, the the background to the story, to the narrative, which I kind of debriefed uh, um, uh, previously just now. <clears throat> okay, and then so we'll go into the text so th so that they understand. Okay, what's the big deal with what they're talking about? What's this text they're disputing over? And then I'll offer my argument, and then we'll go into your argument. Cool. Um, cool. But because I'm I'm pressed for time, as I said, I'm just simply gonna skip any kind of opening statement or laying out any understanding, and I'm simply gonna refer people to my latest video that I've done on it which includes the very screen on the thing as well. I'd rather just really go ahead and, you know, question you or have you question me and kind of get right into it. You okay, know? sure. Okay, yeah. sure. So Only because I like it then. Okay, no problem. No problem. So what we'll do is we'll go, we'll go over the text. So that way people are familiar with what we are disputing and they can understand the basis for my argument. And then you can grill me however however you'd like okay sure all right <clears throat> so um so as i previously stated this the dispute is over uh james too okay i use the kjv but i also cross reference to different versions so but i'll be reading from the kjv uh in this uh particular instance right now so the crux of my argument is based on uh, James chapter 2, 8 through 13. I'll go ahead and read uh, those, uh, those verses. Okay, so it says, If ye fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Verse 11, for he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Verse 12, so speak ye and do so as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy. Uh, for he shall have judgment without mercy that has, that has showed no mercy. And mercy rejoices, rejoices against judgment. Now, my argument is this. James, of course, this is in the context of of a broader epistle, right? So he's he's exhorting his uh, his uh, the church that he's writing to, which, by the way, is he's talking to is the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Okay, he states that in in chapter one, verse one. So he's talking to Israelites. Okay, so Israelites are going to know exactly the language that he's using because there's a cultural context. And um, as you can imagine, there are words that sort of, that may, you know, someone from another country or another time period may not understand. So, so if I say selfie, for instance, okay, someone from the 1980s might not even understand what, just even the 1990s might not understand. What that means. That's a fairly new term, right? Okay, so, um, but everybody, all the uh, millennials, whoever was born most likely after the year 2000, who has sort of grown up with the technology, they know what a selfie is. It's going to automatically like ring bell. So the same is happening in James's epistle. He's writing to Israelites. He's using language that we have to sort of do the extra footwork to peer into. Now, um, luckily we have the books of the law and prophets in this book called the Bible. And so when he is speaking of the Royal law, uh, in verse eight, when he is, uh, quoting, uh, uh, laws from the 10 commandments from the Decalogue, we can, we can, uh, we can access, uh, that 
where, where he is uh, invoke what he is invoking. He's invoking uh, the books of the law and prophets. He is referencing the books. He is calling to mind, <clears throat> to the Israelite mind, the books of the law and prophets, because we have those references accessible. Uh, we can be sure that that is what he is talking about. Okay, so he says, <clears throat> if ye fulfill the royal law. Well, what is the royal law? I didn't hear that. I, I didn't read that in Genesis. I didn't read that in Leviticus. What is the royal law? Well, James unpacks that. He unpacks what the royal law is. If ye fulfill the royal law, according to scripture. Okay, so he says to the scripture. So what is the scripture for James? Is it a New Testament epistle written by Paul? Is it Corinthians? Is it Ephesians? Is it a synoptic gospel? Mm, most likely not. Okay, so we know that that the, the 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 synagogues, the congregations, when they observed Sabbath and went to hear the law, there they listened to scripture. They heard the word, the judgments, the letter. These are all nicknames for the Mosaic law. So we know that because he says according to the scripture, he is referencing a law. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Boom, there it is. Okay, bingo. We've heard that before. That's, that is a Sinai covenant law decree. That is Leviticus 19 verse 18 in the Mosaic law. Okay, he says, but if we hit, if we, if we, if you have respect to persons, right? Because he's speaking of treating people fairly and, 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 you know, treating people with equality, not having respect, you know, rich versus poor. He's invoking this law to say, hey, this is how you should be. You should be following this royal law, Leviticus 19, 18 in the Mosaic law. Now that's gonna, that's gonna seem, pretty awkward to a to a christian because the law is apparently done away with or there's a new law that has sort of substituted the place of the mosaic law the mosaic law has passed according to the christian but i submit that it is not the case that the mosaic law <clears throat> that the mosaic law is um was replaced by any other law okay james the israelite who at this point is probably still sacrificing. I think um, they were celebrating Pentecost. Um, I think Passover is documented in, a, in Acts somewhere. Okay, these are mosaic feasts, mosaic law prescribed feasts. Um, and if you, uh, for all the listeners, if you go to Leviticus 23, you will see that bro. virtually all of these feasts yeah, require, bro. Matt, could you mute your mic? Okay. Matt, could you mute your mic? All right. So that all of these feasts are um, listed in Leviticus 23 and all of them, like virtually all of them, virtually all of them require the role of the Levitical priest and a burnt offering. So James is still living the Sinai covenant law and he's preaching the Sinai covenant law post uh, death and resurrection and most likely ascension of the Messiah, which is, would, which would, would be a bell ringer, which be, would, you know, it would be a, um, it wouldn't, it, it would disrupt, it would make a Christian real uncomfortable to hear that. Okay. <clears throat> and so um, he's still sacrificing at the temple. He's so, and so he's, he's, he's practicing. Hey, bro. He's uh, following and, um, <laughs> Yeah. Matt, are you, is everything good? Yeah, yeah. I just want to say, um, you know, you, you've been going for a while now. Um, I, I don't, you know, have uh, a lot of time. I'm trying to tell you that. Just, well, Matt, I mean, this is what we this is what we plan on doing. If you, do, you, do you not have the time? Well, would you I mean, like, would you I, like to reschedule? I mean, well, no. I like to try to you know utilize as much time as we have all right well um, hey like yeah. i gotta get the argument out the people gotta be informed how how are they gonna be how are they gonna know what your issue is if i don't really set my argument up okay all right, all right give me give me five minutes i'll get through it i'll get through this give me five minutes and i'll be done
All right. So, <clears throat> so, um, so James is doing, he's, he's, he's living the law and he's preaching the law exactly how the Messiah had taught him. Cause that's what the Messiah did. Messiah was an astute follow, uh, um, a, an avid follower and astute teacher of the law. And the, and the Messiah preached repent, repentance unto the law. And he, uh, he never told, he never told anyone not to follow the law. Okay. He, he taught his believers, his followers to follow the law. And so we see that, um, resonating in this specific passage of scripture um so and so to continue on to verse 10 it says for whosoever so so matt i'm gonna go through 10 uh i'm gonna it's 11 not gonna take long and by the time i hit 12 it'll be a wrap up okay so three more verses okay so for whosoever shall keep the whole law this is verse 10 and yet offend in one point he is guilty of all. Now, what does this verse establish? This verse establishes that James understands that you can't keep some laws and not, and not keep others, because if you if you don't if you don't keep, if you keep some laws and not keep others, you're guilty of breaking the whole law. So the so the, the ex exhortation is to keep the whole law. What law is he talking about? some law of Christ that Christians say? No, he's talking about that same law that contains the royal law, Leviticus 19, 18. He's talking about the Sinai covenant law. Now, is he saying only follow this, the, this royal law? No, of course not. Because in, in verse 10, it says, for whosoever keep the whole law and yet offend at one point, he is guilty of all. So not only is he exhorting his believers, his followers to his audience to follow that royal law, but by default, they're going to have to keep, they're, they're encouraged to keep all of the Sinai Covenant law. And the temple standing, okay, the Levitical priests are still functioning. That's perfectly sensible, reasonable advice to give. All right, so, so and so he, uh, he expounds on, on verse 10. For, it, for he said that do not commit, I'm sorry, for he that said do not commit adultery said also do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. I believe this is even echoed in Ezekiel 18 when talking about repentance and also Ezekiel 33 uh, verses 8 through 10. Verse 12, so speak ye and so do as they shall be judged by the law of liberty. Now this, <clears throat> now this in the video, Okay, the one the video with uh, G Con's face all beat up. Okay, it's called G Con's frustrated by James two eight through thirteen. If you guys want to check it out on YouTube after this, okay. I uh, this becomes a point of contention, a strong, a very strong point of dispute. Okay. G. Khan attributed that the law of liberty was some new law, some, some decree that we were free from the Mosaic law. But what I argued in the video that the law of liberty was, was an, another name for the Mosaic law. Now, I don't, I, don't just, I don't just pull this out of nowhere, okay? There's lots of context to this, okay? So, what we have is we we had in the past in the previous four verses three or four verses he's talking about the law and adhering to the law okay he calls it something else in the end but the context clearly defines remember reading for context clues how you can figure out the meaning of the word by looking at the words around it that was something we learned way back in uh early primary grade school Okay, <clears throat> but not only are we sort of limited to these, to verses eight through um, thirteen or twelve, the law of liberty is mentioned previously in chapter one. And Matt, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you as much time as you need to question to grill me. So so just relax. I'm just get I'm just laying the foundation. Okay, 
All right, so so in chapter one, verse twenty-five. Okay, James said James first mentions the law of liberty. Now this is just before he goes into speaking about favoritism and how it's condemned by the law. Okay, in verse nine, James is also. Um, He's um, establishing that to commit sin, it's, it's to, to transgress the law that contains the royal law, it's to commit sin. So he's echoing exactly what John tells us in 1 John 3, 4, okay? Now, so, so the law of liberty, is he's been, he's been talking about it at this point, all right? So... Um, at 21, he says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. Okay, so he's basically, basically saying, put all sin aside. And what that means is to follow the law. Because when you commit sin, you transgress the law. The antonym to transgress is to comply, to heed, to hearken to the law. Okay, and he says, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. Now, a Christian would light up at this at this phrase when they see engrafted it sort of recalls to my it's reminiscent of uh paul in romans 11 okay but this is not the case the word for engrafted here it is uh synonymous with implanted he said the word you received receive the word the implanted word so this word is being given unto them okay the law is being given unto them Okay, which is able to save your souls. Okay, in Ezekiel 18 27, Ezekiel says, <clears throat> uh, the father by the, by the mouth of his prophet says, Those who do what is lawful and right will save their soul. Okay, okay so, uh, so in verse 22, he says, But be ye doers of the word. Okay, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So this word here, this word, all right, the word is from, is, is the word, the only word an Israelite receives is, is from prophets. The law was from a prophet. All the writings of the prophets, all the decrees, the oracles of Elohim, they're from, the, the word was from his prophets. Okay, so I submit that this, what James is talking about, is the law and prophets, the law, okay, and which is what they heard in the synagogue, what they were charged to put to practice, what they were charged to live by. Okay, it's not just the belief, something you, something you believe, it's something you practice every day. Okay, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his, face, his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goes his way and straight, straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. 25, but whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty, listen up, and continue therein. So the perfect law of liberty, David called the law perfect, okay? In, in Psalms 119, 44, he also said, in his law, he walks with liberty, okay? That might not be for, for, verbatim, but for Matt, for Matt, I'm sort of paraphrasing it. Okay, <clears throat> Psalm 11944 communicates David having liberty walking in the law that was given at Sinai. Okay, uh, he says, continuing the continues therein, uh, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. By the way, this word looketh is also synonymous with the phrase, uh, to bend down beside or to kneel beside to hearken okay being he being not a forget, forgetful hearer so that he would sin and transgress that perfect law of liberty but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed okay now this um this um uh, uh, recalls deuteronomy 30 15 where he says i call bef before you heaven and earth life and death blessing and cursing what does james say here 
but a doer of the work, the work, which is what? The law of liberty. This man shall be blessed. He's echoing the law of Moses. He's echoing Deuteronomy 30, uh, 30 15. Um, and if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. And then he goes to describe pure religion as uh, uh, to visit the fatherless and wills in their affliction and to keep himself inspired from the world. Now, this is, is um, this type of behavior is permitted. This type of behavior is not only permitted, it's encouraged by the law of Moses. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now, why do I say um, the law of liberty is the law of Moses? Where do I get this license to say that it is the law of Moses? So, well, if you look at the word liberty, and this will be my last point, I'll turn it over to you, Matt. If you uh, look at the law of what the word liberty is in James 2 and James 1, it's eleutheria. Okay, and eleutheria, which is the uh, Strong's Concordance Greek word G1657, that's G1657, it means freedom, chiefly moral, ceremonial, liberty. Okay, it's what one is licensed to do, what, what one is free to do, what one is allowed to do. And what is that defined by? What is that, what is that established by? That's, that's defined by the law of Moses. The law of Moses is what we are, defines what we are allowed to do and what we are not allowed to do. But it definitely defines what we are allowed to do. Okay? So with that, I will turn it over to um, you, So So Real, and you can just destroy and trash that argument as best you can, man. So whatever questions you have, it's all yours. I'm on mute. Okay, after a 25 minute opening statement, um, I roughly have about maybe 17 minutes or less. We'll just go ahead and do what we can. Um, so the first thing is, um, uh, let's just go ahead and start with, um, you know, the, the royal law. Um, now, it is my understanding, and this is basically my question is this. My question is, now, according to the word royal here, which I'm going to go ahead and read when you look it up. The word royal here is from G937. And what it means is, is belonging to a king, a law which governs other laws and so has a specially regal character. That's what royal law means. So it means that there's one part that's governing all these other parts. Um, my, my question is this, why does it say fulfill the royal law at the end of all of his, of his examples about being, you know, making sure that you're not being a, like a respecter of persons and things like that? Why is that the definition of the royal law and not the Mosaic law? The reason why I ask this question is because if it was the definition of the Mosaic law, then he would have used the examples prior to, not afterwards. I have a reason as to why he did that, but I want to get to that later. If you need me to ask my question again, I'll ask it again. <clears throat> All right, so, so he's using the royal law. He's using the term royal law because that's, that's um, I'm, uh, by, the, by reading the text, my impression is that that's what they called it. Right, the royal law. Okay, and, that, and it's just simply that I think that him calling it the royal law. I mean, reading reading into it that it has anything to do. Um, I mean, I I really don't know what you're getting at when you when I was going to ask that question. Like, yeah, what what is I'll, the I'll tell you what. I'll try to I'll try to ask it in a in a shorter version. Um, no, maybe no, but really I just want to know by piece. I just want to know what what was the reason for looking up the 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 lexicon of of, of royal? What, what was the point? The purpose the purpose behind it was is that um, for one, this is a term that I've never seen anyone use in the Old Testament. 
they're using this term in the New Testament. When I see people begin to use like terms that are brand new in the New Testament, I automatically try to see if they're referring to, you know, Christ or the old covenant law. And usually every time they use these brand new terms, it's always something to do with the new covenant. It's always something to do with Jesus. And so when I looked up the word royal, I was exactly right. Because it says that this not only belongs to a king, which Jesus is king of kings, lord of lords, he's king of the Jews. But it also says that this type of law is a type of law where the, the few parts of it govern everything else. And so this is the way that the mechanics of this law acts. In other words, the royal law basically says you can't be partial. And when you look at the earlier verses, James actually sees the Christians being partial. He says, hey, you guys are loving the rich and you guys are, you know, not loving the poor. And then from there, he says that the rich goes ahead and drags them into the courts. And yet the poor doesn't do that. And so that, that's, that's the reason why. I looked at that and I saw a lot of new covenant content in there. Um, so that's the reason why I said, you know, how is the royal law not pertaining to Christ or not the law of Christ, um, given the way he's using it here about the complaints about how Christians are treating each other? Okay. So, so I think that's, that's our first point of dispute. Okay, we you're seeing the you're seeing the royal law as having something to do with the new covenant. I'm seeing the royal the term royal law as having something to do with the old covenant. Now, as I stated before, uh, his uh, explanation the the statement sort of defines. So, as I said before, when when we see a term like this. Um, oftentimes the context clues, reading the words around that word may help us understand what that mystery word is, so to speak. Okay. So the mystery phrase in this case is royal law. Now, as I stated before, ver uh, verse eight really kind of contains the definition of what the royal law is. Okay. And that is thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, which is, it kind of sounds like the golden rule right like when we say golden rule it's not like you get a piece of gold when when you do this or you know or or, or if you hold on to a piece of gold it'll help you keep it uh better what it what it does it signifies it it, it sort of signifies um its um virtue okay so so by golden rule tr tr uh you know treat people how you want to be treated it it's the golden rule because it's it, it ha it's sort of um, golden in its qualities and its virtues, meaning everything will go well, things will go well. It is a very noble thing to do. And what I, what I submit here regarding the royal law is no different than, than how we see um, the golden law. I'm sorry, the golden rule. The royal law is essentially describing the, this mosaic law decree as gold, the golden rule, you know, describes uh, the way to. Yeah, okay. and, and it's, really, it's really, it's really, they're really right. similar to you, actually. So, what, what my question is here. Okay. Well, if, that, if that's the case, is well, if that's the case, then this begs another question here. So, now that we're going somewhere. No, I just, I know, I, so, now do you lay that out? Hold on, hold on, Matt. Hold on, Matt. Hold on one second. Because we have to understand, I want to be able to cross examine why you presume that royal law means something new covenant now you gave reasons and, and, and it yeah, didn't go okay. hold on hold on hold on well, well, hold i'll on. tell you what i'll I'm tell you what can i can i go ahead and, and do that no. so i can ask this question here because we're actually getting somewhere okay so so i need you to explain for the yeah. people because i don't think i don't think it's fair yeah i, I think sure i'll tell you what i will explain for the people i got it i will explain for the people and then after that, I'll ask you a specific question about this, this, this no, verse what, here, because what, we're, we're on. Matt, Matt, this, yes. is, this, is yes. my this is my platform, bro. Yes, this is your platform. And you asked me to have a short explanation, and I'm going to go to no, do that. No, no, no. Okay, so, so we agreed to come on here to, to negotiate. Now, yes, it's, it's right. not, it's yeah. not, it's, it's, so, Matt, I'm just asking you, respect my platform. What yes, I am respecting your is, platform. Okay, 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 thank you. So, so the reason why I'm having you do this, 
Okay. He says, I believed in, I believe in balanced discussion. Okay? Me too. We're, we're not, we're, what we're not going to do is this cherry love, Mike Pereira, faithful to God business. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing that at all. You know? Okay. Oh, right. okay. okay. So, so what, so what I would like, okay. I, I put, I put my information out there. It seems you had, you took issue with, with health, with my, 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 um, how I wanted to go to certain lengths to be able to communicate that thoroughness. Now you're asking right. me to take the floor again. What I'm asking you to, in order to inform the people to-, to I never that, asked you to take the floor. Matt, Matt um, Sully, just, just listen. To, in, okay. to, in, to, in, to inform the people, Israelite and Christian and non-believer, atheist agnostic, tell them why I, I want to be able to te- uh, grill you and cross-examine you on why okay. you are, because, because I don't think- I'll tell you what, okay. I, you know, I'll go ahead and lay out my position very quickly. Let, yeah. let me get it out. Let me get it sure. out. Sure. Okay. I'm going to give it right back to you right now. And yeah, that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to receive it. So I want to go ahead and, you know, go in my position. Okay. okay but but there's, nice. there's, Can I do that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Matt, l- listen, are you, are you, do you have somewhere to be? Well, uh, yeah, kind of, sort of, but, but go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Well, do this, Matt. Do, let, let's, let's resume this conversation at a later no, date. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll go ahead and just lay oh, out. Okay. So, so, so let's, let's, you can go ahead and ask your questions. Okay. So, so let's get this, questions. let's get this straight. Okay. Let's get, let's get this straight. Mm-hmm. You're not going to rush me and I'm not going to rush you. Right. Correct. Correct. Cool. All right. So what I need you to do, I need you to trust me as a fair and balanced host. Okay. And I need you to offer, I need you to put on record why you believe, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you maybe two minutes of pushback and we can move forward. Okay. Because, right. That's all I've been trying to do. So I'm wonderful. ready. Wonderful. Yep. Fantastic. So, so I'm ready. Can I go? So, so my question is, why do you presume with, with, with not very many, it seems like there's not any clues that sort of support your presumption. It seems just like you're, your Christian um, bias sort of, sort of almost like you take license and entitlement to sort of say what you're saying regarding the royal law. Because I don't think that the text um, supports what you're saying. So if you could just maybe elaborate for a couple minutes and then we can move forward. Okay, yeah, I can do that now? Sure. Okay, great. Okay, so basically, um, the the issue that I take is, you know, you, you pointed and said, look, this right here says the royal law, and after that, it quotes the scripture, and then you say, see, the royal law literally is the Mosaic law because it's quoting, you know, the scripture. My issue is this: is how James is actually going about talking about the royal law with the scripture. When you look at the original Greek, he literally says that if you fulfill the royal law according to this scripture, he does not say the scripture. He literally says this scripture. That's what it by literally this, says. By um, this and scripture, so, what are you so, talking about? Right. Well, I'm, I'm trying to lay out my premise before you could ask questions, but I'll go ahead and try to do both for like a time. So the issue yeah, is. If you don't got time, man, we, you can, we, we can save this for when you have time. I know, I know, but I'd rather at least, you know, do the best I can for right now. So, okay, so if you have the time, so the, so the thing if you is, have the time, no, no, so the thing Matt, is, no, Matt, if so, you have the time, if you have the time, we don't need to hear how you don't need, how you don't have the time. Okay, I see. All right. Well, let me go ahead and continue. So, yeah, I do. I'm sorry. So, anyway, so the issue is if, it, if he says that it's according to this scripture, then that lets us know that not everything in the Mosaic law is according to the royal law because he wouldn't have to be specific if it really was the same thing he wouldn't do that therefore there are things in the mosaic law that are not according to the royal law because they're different you know he ended up pointing out love your neighbor as yourself if you were to go ahead and put in the passage go ahead and keep the sabbath well, that doesn't work because that's nothing like the royal law. And not only that, it doesn't match any kind of complaint that James holds earlier when he says, hey, you guys are treating the rich very nicely and the poor very poorly. It wouldn't even match. You know what? Keeping the Sabbath helps you to go ahead and treat people better. No. So this is one of the ways that we could see that the royal law 
is not the same at all as the Mosaic law, but he's finding things in the Mosaic law that would help them understand the royal law. And the reason why he uses the Mosaic law is because these are what the 12 tribes scattered abroad. They understand the Mosaic law to the T, but when it comes to the law of Christ, that's something a little new. So he uses things that they're very familiar with. Other than that, that, that there's other things in the passage like, hey, the poor are heirs to the kingdom of heaven. That's Matthew chapter 5. That's Matthew 25. When Jesus said, when I was sick, you came and fed me. When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. So James is actually using his own brother's arguments there. That's New Testament, um, that's New Testament terminology, heirs of the kingdom, you know, describing the poor. And so that's just one of the reasons why the royal law is really the laws of Christ, the teachings of Christ. And he's using the old covenant law of Moses to show how those things are similar, right? There are things in the law of Moses that are similar to it, and he wants them to keep it that way. Okay, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I, I, I'm still unclear. I'm still unclear as to how you have license to say that the royal law does not mean from the text, right? Like, so, so if we're disputing, right, Matt, like you have what you believe about the royal law and I have what I believe, okay? I think that the royal law means Leviticus 19, 18 from the Mosaic law. Now, I'm able to clearly and cogently communicate um, why that is so. I can point you to the precise words in the text that gives me license to interpret that the royal law means Leviticus 19:18 love thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself i'm still seeing a logical gap how do you make that connection sure i make that connection by from looking the text. at how yeah from yeah literally from the text i literally went further than you by breaking it down in the actual greek the way i make the connection is I look at how James is talking about his issues with the church, and I look at how James is using the Mosaic Law. Take us through it. Take the us through it. Bullet law. point. Yeah, oh, let's take it to the bullet point. Okay, here verse it is. Verse okay, verse by verse. Let's go ahead. Look at verse 8. It says, now according to original Greek, if you fulfill the royal law according to this scripture, what it says scripture? This scripture. The, the, the one in Leviticus. It says this scripture. So that, he that's, uses that's the Mosaic, Mosaic law. law. Right. That's he Mosaic. uses a part of the Mosaic. Right. Exactly. He uses a part of the Mosaic law that helps him understand the royal law. Okay. That's so if, I, if I can pause you right there. Okay. Just so, we can, just so we can really turn this idea of yours around and, and understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So you, you you do you so you do agree that number that verse eight James two verse eight is speaking with regards to Leviticus nineteen eighteen which is from the Sinai covenant law it's a specific scripture from the Sinai covenant law right yes okay so so okay so my understanding so just so both everybody can understand both sides my understanding is that when he says according to the scripture he's speaking with regards to he's referencing the mosaic law now let's go ahead and um confirm so what this is got it so this is your understanding versus what james actually wrote because there's a difference between this and the um okay so which is which is which is fine i mean i don't I, I don't, I don't see any problem with that. I, that's, that's fine. I just, I'm just wondering, I mean, you, I, I, is, is it, what is the article? Are you saying that the article in Greek is, indic is somehow suggesting that, that, that the royal law is not talking about it's not referring by by the by the scripture. He doesn't mean the whole Sinai covenant law, but he's saying 
if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, which is the royal law, according to this scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, that makes sense, man. So he's saying, if ye fulfill the royal law according to this scripture, and here it is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye will do well. Right. That's fine. I can okay. totally agree with that. I can totally agree with that. Now okay. I understand. So the follow-up so follow point is, is that now there's another point where you can see this, another the distinction. He says that, you know, if you go ahead and be a respecter of persons, if you're prejudiced against people, he says that you commit sin. Now you go back to verse one and he literally, or, or I think it's verse two or something like that. And he literally says, listen, since you guys are in the faith of your glorious Lord Jesus Christ, you should not be prejudiced against one another. Or you should not hold any kind of prejudice. And he's basing that on being in Christ, being in the new covenant, having faith in the glorious Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, if you're in Christ and you decide to do this, he says, you commit sin. And then he says, and he says, even the old covenant law convicts you as a transgression. Oh, oh, so you're saying, so now, wait, you're saying, I just want to finish. I just want to finish. I just want to finish. So now to help them understand even more, he's saying, look, when you actually break this, when you actually do prejudice, you're not fulfilling the royal law. Not only are you not fulfilling the royal law, which is a sin, but you're also a transgressor of the old covenant law as well. And then after that, he goes into an example to show it. And he says, look, if you're trying to be partial, look, if you're trying to go ahead and not kill anyone, but all of a sudden you commit adultery, oh, you're guilty of everything. And that's the same exact way that the word royal is defined in terms of royal law. It is one law governing others. And okay, so look, okay. they're treating, last part, look, they're treating the rich one way and they're treating the poor another way. He says, no, you can't do that. It's either all or nothing. He said, look at the old covenant. It was the same way. This is the same way you have to practice the royal law in Christ. So he showed them an example, and he used the old covenant because, you know, they've been Jews all their lives. But the text doesn't say the royal law in Christ. But that's the thing, though. The verse 2 says that they are <laughs> in Christ. It says that their faith is in Christ. Why, why should there be a distinction? Christ preached the law. There should be a distinction because one, James makes it, and for two, Jesus right. is himself the king of the Jews. It's not the law of Moses that's the king of the Jews. That's why it is a distinction. You serve Christ, <laughs> not the law. Okay, okay. Okay, so 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 just so I'm just so I'm hearing this, um just so I'm understanding this correctly, you're saying that James' primary argument or his his um what he's what he's referencing primarily is a law of Christ, but then he in addition he supplements his argument to say, oh, even additionally, you are violating the law the law of Moses in this way. Is that what you're saying? I'm sort of saying that. What I'm saying is is that he's explaining. What did I get it wrong? Okay, yeah, I'm getting there. What I'm saying is, is that he's explaining the royal law. From there, he says that prejudice is not a part of the royal law. If you show partiality, then you're not keeping the royal law. You can't try to keep part of it. You have to keep the whole thing. The word royal literally like means it like that. One law governs all the others. You have to go ahead and keep the whole thing. If you break one part, then you're guilty of the whole thing. You know, and that's why he used the example of in the old covenant. Hey, if you decide to go ahead and kill somebody, but you don't commit adultery, well, you're still guilty of everything. He used that as an example as okay. to how the uh, royal law works. He says it works the same way as the old okay. covenant. Uh, so, 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 so really law. quick, really quick to interject. You are okay. offer, you are offering a, a whole lot of commentary, mm -hmm. and. I'm not really seeing anything aside. You haven't brought up anything aside from verse eight in James that supports what you're saying. 
Okay. So what I brought up in James that supports what I'm saying is, is he said, you guys are being partial to the rich, right? And all of a sudden you're treating the poor a certain kind of way. You can't go ahead and treat someone real nice and then treat the other one very mean. It's the same way that you end up treating people when you violate the old covenant law as an example. He used that as an example. And so that's the reason why he said when you end up treating people a certain way, that's what the verse says, when you end up having prejudice, when you're partial, he said you commit sin. And that means that you commit sin against the royal law. You're not fulfilling the royal law. That's the reason why he wants them to fulfill the royal law. If you go ahead and be partial, then you're not fulfilling the royal law. And he said, the the royal law of the Mosaic law that doesn't, that that apparently is not to be observed anymore. No, it's not the royal law of the Mosaic law. No, it is the royal law of Christ. And then he uses the Mosaic law. Okay, stop there. Stop there. Stop there. All right. Because you just said it that that verse eight is now it's referring to the royal law of Christ. No, I did not say verse eight is referring to the royal law of Christ in terms of, um, you know, what it says about uh, Leviticus. There, Uh-oh. I said that the royal law of Christ is literally tr- um, making sure that you're not treating people partial, that you're actually you know, going ahead and treating everybody the same. And he okay. uses the, mo- no, wait a second. And he uses the Mosaic law as an example of how that works. Matt, now, where else are- does it say Royal law? Where else does it say in James that the Royal law? Where else does it mention it? I do not think it's mentioned anywhere else, but I do know that okay. the law of Liberty is mentioned twice okay. and the law of Liberty is the gospel. Right. Okay. So, so, so before we, before we dispute the law of Liberty, Okay. Okay. You you have you have up until now you've made a claim. You've 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 posited that there exists um, something in the James epistle called the royal law of Christ, and this royal law of Christ, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is non-existent in the text. You have stated something that is does not exist in the text. Okay. So when you're saying it doesn't exist in the text, you mean that in like a literal verbatim way. You're not meaning it, and oh, you can't actually find its meaning. Where else would you get the idea that there exists the royal law of Christ if you don't see it in a text? Simple. You know, you actually do see it in the text when you look back to verse two. Look at what he says. Where does it say the royal law of Christ in verse in, in verse? Hello. Where does it say royal law of Christ in verse in in chapter one or verse two? Okay, again. Now we're going in circles. I already just got done saying it literally does not say literally verbatim linguistically royal law of Christ. I got that, but I said, excuse me, hold on, wait, 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 excuse me. But I did end up saying that the teaching is there, and I was going to show you again in verse two. So can we, can I show you that again? Unless you want to ask your same question, I go in circles. (laughs) All right, go ahead. Okay, all right. So if you go ahead and look in verse two, it literally says that now that you have your faith in Christ, in your glorious Lord Jesus Christ. Wait, you wait, shouldn't. What, what chapter? What chapter is this? The same chapter, chapter two. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Two. Yeah, it's the same chapter. Yeah. What? What does that verse say in chapter two, verse two? I'm paraphrasing. It says, "Uh oh, because you're." Yeah, I know. I'm on my phone, so you know you can. <laughs> anyway, what? what is it? Yeah, well, hold on, time out. Is there a problem with me paraphrasing? Okay, how about this? What 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 version of scripture are you trying to read from? Well, I was trying to read from the NET, but like I said, I'm on my phone and I'm okay. paraphrasing. So uh, when you I know what? No, excuse Good me. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. So when it, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm gonna so help you. I, out, no, hold on, just hold on, just a second. So I'm when I no, 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 I know you're gonna help me. So when I paraphrase, you can just simply read the verse. Let, let's help each other out. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay, okay. so let me, good. Okay, all right, so let me continue. So Jesus, he, I mean, James. Pulling goodness. it up right now. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, we're in the same chapter. Um, right. You know, James, he literally says, look, because you are now in Christ, your faith is in the glorious Lord of Jesus Christ, you guys shouldn't be partial. You shouldn't be prejudiced against one another. Why? Because your, your faith is in Christ. Notice that we're talking about faith and in Christ. 
nothing about, you know, being in or under the Mosaic law at all. So that is the reason why I say that the royal law is of Christ. And also it says that when you actually uh, commit that prejudice and you're being partial, you commit sin. That's what it says. Okay. And so if you're okay. in so, Christ, hold on, last, last thing, last thing. So if you're in Christ and you're actually committing that, that act, it says you're committing sin. And then after that, it makes a distinction. It makes a distinction. It says, and the law is convicting Matt, you as well. That's a distinction. Matt, we're, 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 trying to f- we're trying to find the royal law. Okay, so you said James 2, the NET. Now, now paraphrase that once more. Sure. And after I paraphrase it, you can have the last word because, you know, I, I do have to go. So this is my paraphrase. Oh, okay. It says, because, he says, because you are in Christ, your faith is in your glorious Lord Jesus Christ. You should not be prejudiced against one another. You should not be partial against one another. Right? That's what it says. Okay. James, James 2, verse 2. For if someone comes into your assembly wearing a gold ring and fine clothing and poor person enters in filthy clothes, do you pay attention to the one who is finally dressed in say? Oh, now maybe it's verse let's, one. Let's go back to verse one. Yeah, let's yeah I think it's verse one. one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. My brothers and sisters, do not show prejudice if you possess faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. For if someone comes into your assembly wearing a gold ring and fine clothing and a poor person enters into the clothes, do you pay attention to the one who is finally dressed and say, you sit here, good place. All right, bro. At this point, I do have to go, but it has been wonderful. And we'll definitely go to the schedule for another time, man. Um, I think this is very healthy. So, yeah, you guys can rock on. And um, peace and love, guys. Same to you, brother. Thanks. All right. All right, so so obviously we can see that there are some issues uh, with Brother So So Real Sali, Matt Sali's um, argument. And feel free to chime in in the comment box because, you know, sometimes when you talk to these Christians, especially Matt Sali, especially, they will get you lost in the woods, okay, so that You'll have, an, you'll have an objection to what they say. And you'll want to ask a question specifically about that thing. That thing that let them, that, that gave them a right to say what they said. And they say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to keep going. I need to finish. And they'll get you lost in the woods. And not, be, not consider that you still have to understand that last point. Okay, what that clues me into, look, if I have the answers, I'm going to give them to you. If I, have, if I have the answers, I'm going to give them to you. And I'm going to take as long as, I, as long as you need to understand that. You know why? Because that that communicates that you really know what you're talking about. You really understand what it is you took time to process and comprehend and um, incorporate into your belief systems and to be able to communicate to somebody else. When an individual prefers, avoids direct questions and avoids and and prefers to go on long tirades and and, and can't find the time, can't afford to stop when the person he's communicating his his or her idea to, the person he or she is committing their, their idea to, when they can't stop, when they don't want to stop, that clues me into maybe you don't have it all figured out. Maybe you don't have the answers. When I when I gave um, reason to when I gave reason and rationale for what I believed about the royal law, I was willing to stop at any point 
and I was willing to take however many questions in order to um, communicate understanding until he understood my point. But what happened when the tables were turned? I wasn't allowed to stop him. He needed to keep going. Was it really about me understanding his position? Or was it about him avoiding critique? You see, when somebody doesn't want to be critiqued, they will avoid they will avoid. And it was like I was twisting his arm. I couldn't speak quickly enough to get my, to, you know, <laughs> I couldn't speak quickly enough to, to, to get out of his way. But when, when it came time for, for me to understand, for us to understand what he believed and why he believed it, it was almost just as big, it was almost just as big as a problem as if I had been talking all along like like he didn't want me to ask the questions he didn't it's like he didn't really want me to understand now i can go on on a further cycle analysis of, of you know what i think is that is the issue i'll just say this some people are in this game because because of how it makes them feel, because of how it makes them appear. And so just being able to play pretend, just being able to play smoke and mirrors to give the illusion is satisfying enough. But when you start to test the illusion, when you start to test the image, then you, you're, you're, you're making too many ways. You're asking for too much, you're demanding too much. Okay. Matt Sully has a reputation. Um, I am typically, uh, at, at this point, me and Matt have, have had lots of, uh, lots of dialogue. Um, for those who aren't part of the Rumble Room, feel free to join the Rumble Room. Lots of biblical discussion. You can, um, you can call people out, tag people, say people's ideas are trash. I mean, not really, but you know, but you can tag people. Usually that, that ruffles people's feathers enough. Well, you can go ahead and join in that. The dialogues are there between Matt and Matt Sali and I. Okay. And um, typically, I'm, I'm, I, 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 at this point, we've had so many of these types of conversations where it, it's, I'm, I'm really sort of um, apprehensive about dialoguing with him. Um, he 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 ran, he ran from the debate. I'm just gonna put that out there. You know, he he asked he asked for this dialogue. He asked for this dialogue, and all of a sudden he had things to do. Um, um, but of course he made the appearance as if he wants to talk again. We'll see. I'm sure I'm sure he will. Hopefully he'll have this game together. But I think um, if you guys check his response video. Um, he had a whole lot to say about, about my breakdown of James 2.1. And what I suspect is that he saw what happened uh, to G-Con. Okay, the video the is hilarious. Uh, go ahead and um, visit the Rumble Room on YouTube. Uh, G-Con is frustrated by James 2.38. Um, there's also, if you scroll down my wall, uh, there's, a, there's sort of a snippet where... Uh, uh, you know, G G Con hit a rough patch, um, and it was it's pretty much like the guy's the left the left side of his brain shut down, and he didn't know how to speak English correctly. Uh, but I'm but 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 G Con and Matt Sally and so so they're all part of this. Um, they're all formerly part of this group called the Shield Squad, uh, um, with who which is sort of um, led by Vocab Malone. Um, there's, it's kind of gone defunct. I'm not sure why, maybe, uh, inner turmoil, but, you know, he mentioned Mama Cherry, Sister Cherry, Marshall Forbes. I posted a video about her. Um, so there's video, Faithful to God is involved in the, in, in their little clique. So they, so they see each other's, they pay attention to the, each other's posts. And when he, when Israelites give them trouble, like say Sakari or somebody else or like myself, 
they all sort of become bothered by it. And so they, um, they sort of get emotional and then they start to, they make their response videos. And what I suspect is Matt didn't like what he saw. And he figured, you know what, I'm going to shut this dude down. And he really didn't expect me to say the things I said in my opening statement. And I think he sort of, he backed out because, you know, he didn't see any, any holes that he could sort of exploit. Um, I try to make sure my, uh, my case is, is airtight. By airtight, I mean just sensible and true. I'm not going to say anything scripture doesn't say. Okay, and if I do, I I gladly welcome people to call me on it. You know, because this is this is this text is important. We live our lives by it. All right. So um, <clears throat> so again, to sort of recap this discussion, um, me and Matt were disputing uh, whether James. We were disputing the notion of James exhorting his audience to follow the Sinai covenant law that is the Mosaic law okay I argued that he did Matt argued that he didn't okay now you heard both sides of the arguments um so you guys can decide for yourself uh I will keep in touch with Matt we argue every day in the rumble room so if he decides to do this again um then I will definitely get the word out um thank you guys for tuning in I hope that this was a, an edifying discussion for my Israelite family, um, my, Christ, my Christian brothers. Um, you know, this is something to think about. It's obviously a challenge, okay? There's obviously, we're, 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 there's sort of this ongoing um, war waged over the scriptures. You know, we're sort of arguing sort of for territory. And when I went, when I'm, when I motioned to take James, um, which is a New Testament epistle, quote unquote, New Testament epistle, you know, it ruffled the Christian um, apologist community. So you have my statements on record. You can turn them around. You can mull them over. If there's something in it that doesn't make sense, feel free to inbox me. Feel free to tag me in the rumble room. All right. So um, with that said, again, I thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this discussion was edifying, and I hope you all have a blessed evening and a blessed week. Okay? Peace, light, and shalom.